do you feel like you've mastered basketball? <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, I have a follow up. You're the person like, to ask. I have a follow up to this question. But yeah, get to this. I, I master who I want to be out there. Okay. And that that's a so I, I cast a pretty wide net. Yeah. You know, when I play, you know. So we so did I master me, yeah. We did an app a couple weeks ago with Luca and we were talking to him about like who he likes to watch and he said to you and he basically to, to paraphrase what he was saying, he was like, It's not fair how easy it is for him to especially talking about scoring, but really everything. Can you set? Can you feel that like not like jealousy, but you know what I mean? Can you feel like other guys? Like, is it? Can you feel their frustration a little bit about like you can do these things that they they would have to work you know months, years, whatever it is to figure out how to do, and this is just a thing you can just pick up just like that. I used to feel that. I used to feel that five or six years ago. It used to come from big men who can't dribble or run. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to feel just a little slight animosity towards what I was doing, but at this point now, it's been more so respect. But yeah, I felt that before. I, it's it's funny. I early on in so in, in a couple of my ESPN hits, like back in November, I I remember I, I said something along the lines that we were talking about best players in the league or MVP. You know, some dumb dumb debate we were doing, and I was like, uh, I was like, players. We 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 sometimes we're like, we put Kevin over here, and then we're, we That's compare everybody else. <laughs> You know, and like, so I made a comment one time, and I was like, and obviously Kevin's the best player in the world, and then we started talking about, and like, I don't mean like MVP, <laughs> like MVP year to year is going to change. We, we can talk about MVP for yeah. this year. Like, I, yeah. I think it's a fascinating conversation, but I'm like, Kevin is the best player in the world. There's no one that can do what Kevin does. And then like, LeBron's maybe the greatest player ever, but Kevin, like, he's the best player in the world. And I like went on my Twitter account afterwards, and I was like, oh God, because <laughs> it was like it was like Steph stands, Lucas stands, yeah, LeBron yeah. stands, everybody coming from my head. Yeah. But yeah. I think as players, when I have conversations with players throughout my career, you know, last ten years basically, it's like, oh, who's the best player? Oh, well, Kevin's the best player. No one can do what Kevin does. Yeah. I f I f yeah. I feel like um, I feel like the style of play is uh, it's just unique. Just you know how I approach the game, trying to score. Like it's just when I, I don't force it. That's the thing. So it, it looks natural. You know what's funny? My observation the other night, and again, I, I mean, I'm I'm hyping you up to Knox, and you took 24 shots that night, and I saw the box score after the game. I'm like, Kevin took 24 shots. <laughs> Like I don't know if I took twenty four shots, maybe maybe once in my career, and like he, there was not a four shot. I remember there was a fast break in the second half. It was like a two on one, and I'm you had a head of steam on the defender, and I'm like, oh, Kevin's just gonna jump, try to draw a foul, score, and like he made the right pass. He threw a bounce pass to the other. I think it was Bruce. He threw a bounce pass to Bruce. Bruce ended up fumbling or whatever, but I'm like, Kevin made the right play. Like that was my takeaway from that watching that. Yeah. You know, in person, I watch maybe NBA every night, but like in person, you, you, you're not looking at your phone. I'm not looking at other box scores. I'm watching the game, and yeah. like I, I, that was the whole time. That's what I'm thinking. Like Kevin just he plays the game the right way. When did that click for you? Because that that is not something you had when you were 18, 19 years old. Like that is something that is developed. That is knowledge <laughs> that gets passed yeah. down year to year. When I got to college, I learned how to watch film. Coach Barnes taught me what to look for when I'm when I get the ball, and it and it grew from there. Once I got more opportunities to handle the ball out on the perimeter, in 2013, I started watching film, seeing film, seeing things in film a little different. Openings that may happen before I see it, where a guy should be in the offense, um, you know. And I understood that at any time, like I can raise up and take a shot. So knowing that I got that in my back pocket is fun. Like, all right, he's open. Like, you got it going tonight. Let me see. You know, it's, it's knowing that I can pass first and then score whenever late in the clock if I need to. It keeps my teammates involved. Is there ever a temptation, a little fucking? I don't know if it's a devil on your on your shoulder, or a voice in your head. That is just like nah, just shoot over everybody every time down the floor, like go, like go into God nah, mode. Nah, see, a lot of people ask why I don't get 60, 70 point games. This is me on the way to the game. <laughs> shoot forty and I times. I to break there. it down to people. It's like when I watch these dudes get sixty and seventy, it's like the, the adjustments don't change. 
from the from the opposing coach. If I come off a of pick and roll and you want to drop the first play of the game and I switch the shot, you probably gonna make an adjustment. So I can't I can't come off and get free looks anymore off a of pick and roll. So if I come off a pin down, if I get a wide if if, if I come off a wide open pin down, what you think your coach is gonna say if I make a three the first quarter? Make an adjustment. So it's like it, the little sh it takes a lot for somebody to score big seven, fifteen, and sixteen free throws, wide open three pointers. Like I'm not getting those looks. Your whistle's <laughs> crazy too. You know what I'm saying? So shooting over two people, it's hard to get <laughs> sixty points, <laughs> fifty points. Consist, you know, shooting over two people. So I got to play with adjustments from the opposing coach in game. Like he don't wait till after the game and say, "Damn, we should have trapped KD right there." He gave a 60. No, it's just they make adjustments on you. So take the, take the number of points out for a second. I wanted to ask you about the the game five in the Milwaukee series last year, not even game seven. Yeah. Because that was pretty close to God mode in the playoffs. Yeah. Where they, they knew what was coming every time down. It didn't really matter. Is that a point where it's like you're in the you're in the playoffs and the flip switch, just the switch flips, and you're just like, fuck it, I'm going to do what I need to I do? Mean, well, in that game, I felt like, their whole plan was like, well, KD can't beat us by himself, so yeah. let him just go crazy. We're going to lock everybody else up. So they were a little loose on their coverages, left me one-on-one -on -one sometimes. They planned and dropped the whole game. It's just like, well, I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I made 17 of my 23 shots because I just felt like it was a regular season game as far as the coverage on defense. And then they ramped it up a bit after that, but – I felt like they underestimated us that game. Statistically, that's like one of the best playoff games ever. I think. I, I, and I'm that. still pissed that I missed that free throw to get 50. <laughs> it was like wide left, and it, I was just so hot because I should. It's the 50, 17, or 10 just looked way better than 49. Sitting, was, yeah. I was sitting with my boy, you know, him, Alan Yang, for that game, and we were like, "Fuck, he scored 55," and you break it. It's like. That shit pissed me 50, off. 70, what? what You're right about that. And nice. that game was huge for me because. When you have an Achilles injury, like, I had somewhat of a doubt, like, of my abilities, my physical abilities. So, like, I wanted to test and see, like, that's the best team that we're going to play. And playing 48 minutes is, like, that's the ultimate test to see what my body is. So, for me to get through that game in the way I did it, it was just, like, a huge milestone for me. You did know you, what I'm saying? Was there any point in that game where it was like, oh, I got to get a blow? That's good. Nah. Because I was just no so hits. in it. Yeah, I was just so in that game seven though. That game seven, I was, I was, I was gas. That extra five minutes, it was, was came a to lot. a point where I just, I just, I was, I didn't know where I was one time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was running, I was running back down court, and I was just such in the days. Like, I just felt like, mm -hmm. like hold on, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> and I never felt that in a game before. And I was just like, hold on, I may need a break. <laughs> you know, what I mean? he called time out right after that. Did you think the? Uh, the three win. Did you did you think your foot was in the line? Yeah, I knew it was. It's weird that you can feel that type of stuff. The clock running down, or like your foot on the line. Like it just it just felt like yeah. I, I, as soon as I stepped on it, I'm like, damn, I knew that. It's like a shooter thing. Three. You can feel no, the no, line. No, it's it, it's like it's like court awareness. Yeah, because we were having a discussion earlier about um, the Brady Manic elbow against yeah. Baylor, and mm. we were talking about when you get to a certain level of basketball, you know, you just instinct. Yeah instinctively yeah. where everybody is on the court and you know where you like there were times where i'd run for like a transition corner three and i knew that i had stepped out of bounds before the breath yeah, even the blew his whistle yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. just you just know like just being you on the court it. for so long you know every angle you just know every crack and crevice of the you just know it it was it was blatantly obvious by by game seven that milwaukee's plan was basically you know we're like KD can't beat us, and he fucking nearly did. Let him die out there. Just let him die out there. Man. He can't beat us alone. He nearly it's also did. Just, it was also funny. I mean, we we've had Drew on a couple of times since that series, and this is a guy we've talked about with you. We've talked about with a million people on the show. Arguably, you know, one of the best defensive players in the league. And he was saying about you. Know, he's like, I think he literally said that we we're like, how do you defend Kevin? He's like, you just. Play defense and then you just pray. You just like hope it doesn't go in. I've seen that. I've seen that. There's like nothing else you can do. And so it's like against guys like that of all people, it's not like these are guys who don't know how to play defense. I mean, they definitely, I mean, Drew Holler is tough to score on, though. You know what I'm saying? He definitely makes every attempt tough. When guys are physical, is you got to, you know, you got to dive a little deeper, use a little bit more energy, you know. 
Um, and that team was super physical with PJ. And you switch off with Giannis and you switch off with Drew. So anywhere you went, you was finding, you was going against somebody that was going to either body me up, ride me as I'm going to the rim. So I had to be on point. I always, I always felt that way with Kobe. That was like, I, I didn't guard you enough to feel that, mm. but like, I guard D Wade. I guard Manu. Yeah. You know, those were tough matchups. But like, I'd guard Kobe and I'd be like, he's either going to make or he's going to miss. Like, that's, that was my, like, I, I can make it hard on him, whatever yeah. the fuck that means. But like, ultimately, <laughs> Kobe's either going to make it or miss it. There wasn't a whole lot you could do. Yeah, Kobe had a, I want to say, from 2008 to like 2013, it was no defense for him him but to like once again yeah, before he before he tore yeah, his Achilles like, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it's like extra help and uh or just full out double <laughs> but what I everybody always talks about you and there's other guys that get mentioned in this sort of thing but like everybody's always like KD he's the definition of a hooper and I'm like what is what does that mean like what is your definition what does it mean to be a hooper what's the difference we between a hooper hoopers, like, and no nah, there's a difference though no nah, man we all spend time in gyms that's what a hooper is to me I spend a lot of time in the gym do you think there's a difference which one are you I, I think I think there's a I think there's a love like a basketball player is, a basketball player is someone that like a, a player in the NBA there, you can be a basketball player and be like oh, I'm good at this and I can make money and I like everything that comes with it a hooper is someone that like it is who in know. the gym at all time. Like who who yeah. likes being in the gym. Like non hoopers to me, just it's a job. It's just they only do it when it's time. How much do you, how, do you think that 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 the addiction to basketball extends off the court? Because I think it, like Jamal Crawford's a great example of this. Like Jamal, if he's not playing basketball, he's coaching his son in basketball. He's thinking about basketball. He's mm-hmm. watching basketball. Like. I think that it's a, it's a, being a hooper is to me is like your whole life is an extension of what happens on the court. Yeah. For sure. I mean, our lives are wrapped around this game since we was eight, nine years old every day and dedicated to playing. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's just taking on life of its own right now. But, but it's like, you know, we've been in school for this since we were kids. So it's like you got so much <laughs> knowledge and info. And so many other people love basketball. It's just hard to get away from it at this point. It's like you always want to talk about it. It's always going to be on TV. It's the coolest thing now. Like it's 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 culturally cool, you know. So it's just it's it's just in our DNA at this point. And we played for this long. How many years we played in the league? Fifteen. Yeah. I mean, fifteen years of six months out of each year, you. Locked this is in fifteen for you, right? Because yeah. you came in a year after me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fourteen on the court. Yeah, right, right, right. Because I missed that year, but yeah. I mean, but 15 getting paid. 15 getting paid. <laughs> See, don't tell. I'm not 14. I'm 15 years in. I that check. Yeah. Do you think uh, we, we get in like to these discussions all the time, um, whether it's on Twitter, you know, I do it on ESPN all the time. We do it on the podcast, like comparing eras. But even in just your era, from when you came in the NBA – how much harder was it then to score 30 in a game than it, than it is now? It was so hard to score 30. Back then, I mean, you got two guys in the paint, and it wasn't exotic offenses like we got now, multiple exotic screens. <laughs> How many? Eddie and I were talking yesterday, and I was like, yo, Kate, we were like, KD used to run Rip Hamilton yeah. floppy action his rookie year in Seattle. That's all, the, that's all they ran that for was you. The, everyone, that was the key play. And that, and that seemed like you just were – out of this world as a offense <laughs> if you were in a floppy. But now, you know, you got coaches dedicated to just finding trick pet plays to get you open and get you in space. But back then it was like you had to kind of create your own space out of nothing. And the mid-range was key because you can't, you know, it wasn't a lot of threes being put up and the paint was clogged. So scoring 30, man, you had to make tough shots back then now it's way easier one one of the fun things that happened in my career and i feel like i came in the league probably like five or six years too soon Mm -hmm. is when i first came in the league if you were a great shooter like you were shooting spot threes yeah you were waiting on a double team in the post or someone the low man to come over and the swing swing to the corner and then all of a sudden People were like, oh, wait a minute. This guy, he shoots 40% from three. He's shooting three or four a game. If we can get up to eight a game, 
like our offensive efficiency goes way up. So the creativeness and Duncan Robinson is a great example of this. Like the, the sets they use to get him open with Spo, the sets Doc used for me, the sets Brett Brown used for me. Like mm. that was fun to me. And you talk about like the, the exotic offenses, <laughs> like the counter to the counter to yes. the counter. Like these things are in the scouting report. We got to counter for that yes, to get exactly. an open three. Exactly. I mean, having shooters that can run off the of screens and shoot the ball quick, that's a supreme skill. And it's, you have to have that if you want to have an exotic offense. Like it's built around guys like that. You see Steph plays. You even see, like, we played Ben McLemore in last week. <laughs> yeah. This guy had five threes in the first half, but all of them was off of pet plays, fades to the corner, double screen on the baseline. He coming off shooting quick. So it was like anybody could get hot on you in the league and beat you. It's like any given Sunday now with the three-point line and the way they run his sets for threes. To, to that point, though, sorry, sorry, but to that point, while it's – it's like it's it's hard. It was harder to score back then. It's easier to score now. Some of that is what as well to me is I think the talent pool. Oh, I'm yeah. not saying that the great players now are better than the great players 20 years ago. I'm saying there's more great players now. Yeah, I believe mm -hmm. so too. Than there were inter, talent. Yeah. Than there were I mean, 20, look, 30 years ago. You look at the centers now. Most of them can shoot threes, take the ball off the dribble, yeah. make a bounce pass. Just got you know got some skill for offense. Not a lot of back to the basket, bigs, old power fours in our league. So, and that's the that's what really changed the league. To be honest, I think Draymond had a huge played a huge part in shifting that with being a four man that can guard fives mm -hmm. and being able to dribble and play so fast. Kind of took out that traditional big that just like you like to you know sit in the paint. I didn't tell Draymond this because I didn't want to offend him. But when we had him on the podcast, I wanted to tell him this. But I remember there was a moment. I think it was his second year, but it was my first year with the Clippers. And we were playing late in the season. I was I missed a bunch of games that year with my, my back injury. And we were playing late this, in the regular season. And he was in the game in, like, the second or third quarter. And I remember thinking to myself, like, what does he do? Because back, <laughs> no, like back then, back then, like, it, every, you know this, like, you got to do one thing great. Yeah. You know? I'm like, what does he do? Like, and I said, I, th I, I was fucking horribly wrong on this take. But I was like, man, he's. He's the worst rotation player in the league. Like he doesn't do anything <laughs> oh, great. But it was different back then. The philosophy was yeah. like Swiss Army guys, and then and obviously Draymond became, you know, through experience and obviously his natural intellect. Yeah. But he became one of the smartest basketball players ever. I didn't know he had that, of course. Yeah. I mean, we he even would tell you that he came in didn't know he didn't even know how he wanted to play because he was, was a, his identity. Like what's yeah, my identity? He was a playing player? a three. He was playing some four mm -hmm. sometimes, but he was mainly a wing player with Mark Jackson. He was coming into the games to provide def a defensive presence on, presence on wing players. He wasn't really playing this Draymond role that he is now. But once he got moved to playing a small ball four and five, then I think that's when the league took off and you've seen way more skill from top to bottom in your lineup. You look at teams like Toronto, they're just loading up on 6'8", 6'9", 6'10". Hopefully you can guard all of this. And that's – that's like the counter to a guy like you, like yeah. you know, and and then you look at college, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And you guys, they're, they're looking for six, six ten, seven yeah. foot guards yeah. essentially now. I, I mean, that's my theory on the, where the basketball will go in the future. It's gonna be nothing but six nines up and down the board from point guard to center, and it's just deaf French kid, Victor. Yeah, it's just, oh, he's yeah. yeah, he's like make believe, but that's what. They look. That's like a, the future yeah. of basketball. Is. Yeah. Length, athleticism, skill. Kevin's talking about himself. <laughs> like, I'm talking the about the future Kevin. of basketball. <laughs> the future of basketball. Wing There's a bunch player. of bees running around. Do you yeah. feel that though? Like, are you aware of that? You, well, I mean, you understand that impact? I look at the Clippers. They just spamming wing players. Look at the Toronto. Like you said, everybody's one wing player. That's just Boston. I just happen to be a wing player. You know, yeah. but like you got guys that can guard one through five now. I mean, when you got you know. Stretch bigs, you can you know, six nine guy can guard us. How about big. how about the 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 short lived era of the stretch four? Think about that. There's no such thing as a stretch four anymore. Yeah, like the you have to be high, like the those yeah. type of guys. You got to be. You got either got to be a center or you got to be able to handle and guard one through four. Mm -hmm. Like you, like I'm not gonna name names, but like why not? Because like most of them are my friends because I play with them. I mean, in Orlando. <laughs> 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 we invented the stretch four. <laughs> no, but it's Shout like the, short. It's just it's, it's, it's like that. That it was like a like a I don't know 
08 year, like 08, 09 to yeah. like 17, 18. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, no, we could just put Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown at yeah, three and the four and we're guys, good. Yeah. yeah. It, that you Orlando know, team was revolutionary yeah, too in that same way. That team. Yeah. I mean, do you, you think that team was playing yeah, a huge I, part in them? I, What's like, going on now? For this, this like era, right? To me, it started with Phoenix. Mm. It started mm-hmm. with the seven seconds or less. Steve Nash, D'Antoni Sons, where they're chucking threes. And 05, even, 06, Phoenix team. 04, yeah, I think, 05, yeah, yeah, 04, 05, 05, 05, 06. Yeah, yeah, it started then. Playing our, a Mario our shit, our shit was an accident. Boris. Because uh, in preseason, uh, uh, Tony Batiste hurt his shoulder guarding Dwight in a preseason workout. And he mm. was going to start at the four. And Rashard was going to start at the three. And Turk was going to come off the bench. So then in preseason – Sort of by accident, they were like, all right, we got to go small. So they tried to play Turk at the four, and he was not having it. <laughs> he was like, because, <laughs> again, back then, he's guarding Zach Randolph. No, he's like, he nah, 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 nah. I'm it. not doing this. Yeah. I'm not doing this. So Rashard, because he's a, he's a fucking pro, was like, yeah. I'll do it. And and yeah. all of a sudden, we just we ran that offense. you know. And, and truthfully, like the first time I heard about analytics was with Stan. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. broke it down for us. He's like, "This is what a corner three is worth. This is what a layup is worth historically. This is what a mid range is worth. Here's what, here's what we want our shot profile to be. And if you look now, like we would have been bottom five in the league in three point attempts per game. But at the time, That's it hard. was revolutionary yeah. to play four out, one in space and have you know space in the paint all the time, allowing Jameer to get downhill, allowing Turk to get downhill. Do you think Rashard turned into just a catch and shoot player though? Because I felt like in Seattle he would was walk a problem dribble. on the block. Off the on a block, on the, off yeah, the dribble yeah, yeah, yeah. too. But I felt like when he got to Orlando, it was like just catch and shoots. Yeah, he was playing a role though because we put the ball in Turk's hands. Yeah, you know, and obviously Jameer had an All Star year. He yeah. probably could have been an All Star a couple more years. Mm-hmm. But Turk played such a role on those teams, and then to a degree, like Richard, just he was older at that time. You know, yeah, he, he was. was by the time we sort of ended that run in eleven, basically 11, 11, 12, Richard was well into his thirties at that time. Yeah. I think people forget how close that finals was. I know you, you were just talking about it with Powell. Like, that, it swung several times and could just have easy, easily been 2-1 you guys, maybe even 3-1 you guys, and you know, shit just broke. But that team was like – what you guys did to the Cavs, like nobody expected yeah. that, you know. We, 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 that year we kind of came out of nowhere, nowhere. Our 2010 team was actually better. We were deeper. Yeah, you, you, we, Vince we, on that team? Yeah, Vince was on that team. We, we were we were better that year. We just kind of we we tricked off. We had home court against the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. We tricked off the first two games mm-hmm. and, and we lost in six. I mean, they, we couldn't come back from that. That team was a team was too good. That Celtics team, but um, yeah, I I think uh, I think I think year, I think right? what people Celtics, what yeah. people tend to like overlook as time goes on is how much playoff series finals. They swing on two plays, yeah. three plays. You know, our you series, it, our yeah. series against the Lakers was Courtney Lee's missed layup at the end of over t- or at the end of regulation uh, in Game Two. Mm-hmm. Us being up five in Game Four with under forty seconds to go, they come back and tie it. You know, we we missed free throws, we missed a pull up jumper. Derek Fisher hits a three. Mm-hmm. Last year's Finals came down to two plays: Giannis's block, recovery block, and then and then Drew steal and and. Uh, and Giannis is dunk like it was it was two plays so yeah. when your finals cuz you guys beat the shit out of them the first <laughs> year right the first year was the 40 year right no, no second year was second year was year. second year was 40 first 4-0. year it was uh, we went up 2-0 at home but game 3 they had a chance to beat us i think we were down most of that game to like the last minute that's the Corver shot right that, that game yeah, if Corver would have hit that shot that's right they went up five. He had an open corner three, and that would have sent us home. Then they had that most historic shooting night <laughs> in the finals history of game four. So who knows what that would have been like. Um, 2 2 going back to the Bay, you know. But and then in 2012, we uh, won game one at home. Game two, we were down big and end up having a shot to tie it with a couple the, seconds to go. I'm, I still should have made the shot. People say I got fouled, but I don't. Be, I, I should have made it. I don't believe I got fouled. Thought it was a good. But look. that would have changed. I mean, we'd have been up two zero going to Miami, and that's when the it was two three two series two. So we played three straight games right. in Miami. Yeah, that was a sh- yeah. So it was yeah. It, it could change in a matter of just one possession. Did you did you have any doubt in the Rockets series? 
is 18. The year where Chris got hurt. I knew that we can crawl out of that, but I, that was a tough position to be in. I can't lie. You know, because <laughs> nothing, was, nothing, was yeah. nothing was working. Nothing was working. Like, we, our pet plays, they were switching everything. Like, literally every screen was a switch. And when you got a team that relies on movement, offense, passing the ball, when you switching every screen like that, it forced everybody to play one on one. We had guys that didn't naturally didn't score in the isolation situations. You know, Clay was solid, but he wasn't. He was used to coming off screens more so than anything and posting up guys. But off the dribble out at the three point line, he didn't really do that a lot. So me and Steph had to really play one on one that series, and we weren't the Warriors weren't really used to that for four years, a team that schemed them that well, you know, so we that shit hit us like a a brick. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we figured it out after Tommy and then C P getting hurt. That was that helped us for sure, you know. But when a, when a team is melting down like that, you're conscious of it and you're is it like, yo, I gotta put the foot on the gas or you just still doing your own shit and in that series? Yeah. In that game seven too, right? That's when they missed all the shots. Yeah, when we got down 15, we walked into that locker room like, oh, shit, this can't be it. Like, we're losing. With OCP, we had big dreams of just destroy the league and we're going to end up like this. So, coming out the half, I think we might hit a three to come out the half. And once we hit the first three, I'm like, all right, we got we got our sh- our legs up under us. Mm-hmm. I knew we was going to walk them down after we made our first, our first shot and then – they couldn't hit a three. That was where they missed like 21 in a row or something. 27. 27, 27 yeah. in a row. And they had like some wide open yeah. ones. And some they good were like ones. front yeah. rim. I'm like. Good shooters. Good shots. It was just meant for us to go to the finals. It was nuts. I felt that way. I want to get into media with you. Where we have You've mentioned a bunch of your TV hits and stuff. And I always joke with him, this dynamic of a former player up, up there saying, yo, these guys suck and here's why. <laughs> <laughs> But you got into it early. You 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 were potting real early. I, I think you're the pioneer there. I don't know if you take credit, but I, I think you are, as best I know. The first active guy, baby. Yeah, you know, hey. Whatever. Revolutionized <laughs> the industry, no big deal. Off, definitely, take, definitely takes credit. <laughs> <laughs> as you said, was was media always the plan for you, or did somewhere it develop to like, yo, this is this is nah, this is I a lane for me? I, I I actually I actually didn't really start the podcast because I was like, I'm going to have a career in media. I, I started it because I was curious if I could do something besides basketball. It was just simple. And then it was like, then it became like, oh, I'll get some reps. I did a couple, you know, countdown hits when I played for the Clippers. Like, do I like it? Um, and then I just, honestly, I, you know, Tommy and I met, met, met at the ringer. Uh, and we, we launched, you know, we, you know, he brought it, came as a co-host my last year with the ringer. I did three years with the ringer. And then we launched the old man in three, but like, I don't know if my life is going to be in media. Like I, it, I'm just open to things yeah. and I like what I'm doing right now. It's like when I was playing, I had the greatest job in the world. It was my dream to play in the NBA. And then, you know, this, this has just been fun. It's been rewarding and I like doing it. I got, I'm going to ask him why, like, why the fuck do you have a podcast? <laughs> like you're Kevin Durant, bro. <laughs> like I said, man, I, I just like talk about the game. I just like talking to be honest. Yeah. Just like you, man. Shit, you want to? You got so much knowledge and info. You wouldn't, wouldn't mind just sharing it. You know, it's simple. You know, so. I think part of the appeal of the podcast too, in current media space, and, and granted, dude, like, I, yeah, I fucking I work at ESPN sometimes, but like, this really is what like the meat is. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. when we when we can really talk hoops with like. There's no commercial breaks here, man. Just there's right. no, How there's long no, are we in? We're yeah. at least an hour in. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a conversation about basketball, about memories, stories, whatever, connections. Um, like and, and, like, you know, people that watch this or listen to this will be like, like Kevin and I were never teammates. But, like, there's a mutual respect there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, a lot of guys I have on, I, we, 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 we have on. We, we don't. We don't know the guy before we even have him on. Yeah. But like they want to come on the show, we want to have him on the show. There's an inherent respect. There's you know peer to peer. So having conversations like that is man, it's fun. Yeah. It's enjoyable. Yeah. And like like what we were talking about earlier, like I love basketball. I I knew I loved basketball when I played. I didn't realize how much I loved it till I retired. Really? Really? Yeah. Why do you think that is? I I don't know. Like I remember when I retired. I was like, man, I'm not really going to watch the NBA this year. You know, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not going to really watch the NBA. And then 
uh, I booked I booked a, a golf trip first week of the NBA season, and I, I played. just to get away from yeah yeah just yeah just because <laughs> I'm like I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna watch opening night no 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 I'm gonna book this golf trip so I, I went and played golf and then I got back and that's when ESPN was like do you want to come work for us and I was like oh, yeah whatever so. Then I was like, I'm gonna work Tuesday, so I was like, I gotta watch, I gotta watch the game Monday night, you know. And then I'm, I'm like, all right, I watch the game Monday night, and then like Tuesday turned into Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm fuck, I'm back on it. Like if the TV's on in my house, it's basketball. It doesn't matter. Like I, yeah, I, I've like watched a relationship. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I've watched more Almost college basketball. <laughs> Almost dumped her, but he's <laughs> back. He's, you know, women's college basketball, men's college basketball, NBA. Like if there's basketball fun, on the television, man, I'm just, fucking watch. I don't care what it is. We were watching McDonald's all American. Like <laughs> yeah. coming from the game, get to the house, put well, a game on. I, I wanted to ask you guys about. We we talk about this all the time with different guys. So like, who do you like watching in the league right now? I was wondering, saying, would you like? Do you have rooting interests? You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name the guys that I'm super tight with. Like, I like watching CP play, but like, like the guy for me right now is Book. I love watching Book play. I was gonna say beautiful book. game, like, beautiful game. I was gonna say Book too. I mean, he just this is a pretty game for one, but I I, I just think he's really mastering who he is right now. He's figuring it out, like how to play at an elite level but a still win because he's he always was scoring the ball but he knows how to win for me it's Kyrie um when he came back did you remember what I texted you when he came back yeah I mean he's like you said he's just in his other planet his other world <laughs> yeah. like I reserve yeah. time to watch that yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, who, exactly who, who else is on that who else is on that level take yourself out of it who else is on that level where you're like okay they operate differently they operate in a different like tier than everybody else uh Joel for sure. It's he doesn't make sense. It's ridiculous what he can do. Uh, I think Giannis is in that tier, uh, especially when he's making the turnarounds in the post. Like, he made one last night. <laughs> yeah, we was bugging when we started. Yeah, yeah, like, when he's <laughs> making shots like that, it's just – and then I think Bron, Bron was uh, reached that tier for me this year. It's, the shot making has been yeah, incredible ridiculous. this season. I mean, then I mean, shit, there's so many dudes, bro. I can't. I I just like watching. I, I like shot makers, and I feel like now in our league, it's so many great shot makers, and it might not be the superstar players, but it's some like Reggie Jackson to me has been making some amazing shots this year. Mm-hmm. Like guys like that have been playing well. Like yeah. fucking Sadiq Bay had 50 in the shots that he yeah, was making. He was shooting that. fadeaways yeah. in the post and fall away threes. I'm just like, I, I just love to see that shit. You know, I, the thing about Giannis. That's. I'm glad you brought him up because, for a guy that people like knock his skill mm-hmm. because he doesn't shoot threes at a high clip or whatever. And by the way, his mid range field goal percentage has gone up literally every year in his career. He's shooting 42 percent from the mid range this year, which is well above league average. Way better than what he was before. Ooh, yeah, low 30s, <laughs> low 30s. But like he he's another guy. When you talk about like somebody mastering who they are, like he mm-hmm. he's just on his way every year, just mastering more and more and more. But the thing I like about him, and this is why I like watching him, is like we all, we would be like, all right, guys, it's time to turn up. Like Giannis, you don't need to tell him that. Yeah. Like did you, the the skills competition <laughs> at All Star break, <laughs> he's on like he he all goes the yeah he goes a hundred out of a hundred all the time. There's yeah. a physicality. And that, by the way, that is a skill. Yeah. Like being yeah. able to do that every night. A motor like that. And yeah. and. The thing that impressed me, not, and I knew this about him, and I suspected this would happen, this guy wins two MVPs in a row. The following year, wins an NBA Finals. Is MVP of the Finals, has 50 in game six in the closeout game. Short offseason, comes out looking for blood. Mm-hmm. Like, he started the season so well. Where a lot of guys with a short offseason – Probably would have taken it easy. Probably would have taken it ga- games off, and he just came out like, yeah, like Giannis, yeah. hundred out of a hundred. Yeah, a short off season though is beneficial though, in my opinion. Think so? Yeah. Why? Because you don't get much of a break. Your mind is just still in game mode. I feel like like three months off and just totally your mind is not even focused on a game or preparing for a game. It's just a totally different world to me because I know how to, like, shut it off where I don't worry about basketball at all. Those two mindsets are just two different things. But when you stay locked in, even if you don't get up on your feet to play, you're still really in it, in my opinion. What does what does shutting it off for Kevin Durant, what does that look like? Like, before I go to sleep, not worry about anything. 
like the next day, like what I'll do when I work out, like what shots I'll take in my workout or what I'm going to do. <laughs> Wait, do you do, you really do that? Like the night before? So like Just in, like off, in off next, season, do you think about your next day's workout the day before and what you're going to work on? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like what I'm going, what I'm going to yeah. go through. I just like to get prepared, so. You're visualizing. There's no, yeah, no surprises. Like, if I'm going to go, if I'm going to shoot 50 shots from seven um, spots on the floor, then I, I want to get ready for that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to just be surprised now that I, when I go into the gym. So, I like to kind of yeah, mentally, like, you know. And I don't want to write things down too much that it'd be too. You know, yeah, I would go. I, I would go into. I would go into even in, even in season. I would, I would go into workouts with like a purpose. So like on a Monday, I'd say, oh, you know, what did I do? What did I do on Friday? Oh, you know, I did a lot of catch and shoot stuff. All right, today's going to be DHOs and you know, you know, one dribble pick yeah. and roll shots, and I work on that. But like I would, I, I would go like if we lost on Friday in the playoffs, I go back in the gym Monday, and I but. Those days in between, I would write out my entire summer schedule. <laughs> so I, you know, I go Thursday to Sunday. I get away, or I, 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 July Fourth weekend. I'm not doing shit. You know what yeah. I mean? But like every other day throughout the summer, like I knew where I was going to be at 10 a.m. This explains the getting mad about not having lunch at 2:14 <laughs> every game day. Were, were you one of those guys who get, get frustrated at themselves when they miss shots in a workout? Oh yeah, like cursing yourself out. You, but you probably. I mean, yeah, I do that, but. I, I, it came to a certain point. I had to stop. I I got. I had to correct myself when I do shit like that. Really? Yeah, because I don't. I don't. I didn't want to talk to myself that way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> the refs is cool, but you. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I just had to. Because the next shot is important, though, and, mm. and 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 I've always felt myself thinking about last shot, the last shot sometimes, and when I'm scream fuck or pissed off like that, it can bleed over into the next shot. And I realized that, and I was like, "Hold, on, I gotta maybe I gotta chill on, the, on how I talk to myself." So I wondered if other players thought like that. Missing a jumper for you must feel like acid in your eyes. Cause <laughs> I hate it. In the workout by myself, I don't feel yeah. like somebody told me that if you shoot fifty percent in the workout by yourself, then you're not a good shooter. Like I feel like I should be making ninety percent of my shots. Yeah. So if I, mean, I if miss, I, yeah, I'm pissed. I yeah, I, I I think like an average workout for me in the off season, I'm shooting eighty percent. And I'm, I'm like shooting game shots. I'm not. This is not yeah. spot shots. I'm yeah, spot shots. I'm moving, shooting higher yeah. than that. I'm saying like game speed. I'm coming off a DHO. I'm getting to my right hand. I'm taking a step back. You know, I'm like, I'm doing that for an hour, and I might take 300, 400 shots, and at that game speed, and I'm like, I'll, I'll shoot 80. percent That's an average workout for me. But there are days like you shoot 70, percent and I would leave the gym, and, and I, man, I'm down on myself. <laughs> bro. Yo, I'm <laughs> down on myself, <laughs> and it's a fucking workout in July. It doesn't matter. Yo, I remember. <laughs> Because I was going through my Achilles, I had a lot of those days yeah. where, like, I felt my jumper felt good, and then it would feel a little off here. And then I went on, I remember I went on a break for my birthday. I was in Cabo, and I swear I didn't have a good time because I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't believe, like, what is going on with me, basically? Like, I'm shooting the shit left, I'm just going right. I was really thinking about this, and, and, and I had to. It's like questions you ask yourself, like, am I too involved in this shit right now? Like, where I can't. I'm too invested in this life. <laughs> yeah. And it's, well, it's, especially after everything you've accomplished, you know, because you're not just starting out. It's like you're having those thoughts after multiple championships, multiple finals, MVPs, everything like that. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, it was stressful. We can, we, can, we can wrap up. But to that point, like, I, I'm, I'm actually very curious the mindset when you tore your Achilles – did you go through the self pity? <clears throat> no. You always had that that like hearing you talk about this I understand now why you have been so good coming off this injury because there it seems like there was a point to prove not 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 just to everybody else but like to yourself like yeah. I can get back yeah, yeah, yeah. to being me. Yeah, for sure. Fuck this, I'm doing this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I early on when I first did it, I was just I, I did ask myself, should I made a different decision going out there and play? Like, and then after three or four times, I asking myself, like, what good is that going to do? Like, so I moved past it pretty quick. Um, but I knew it was going to be a struggle coming back. Like, I just didn't – the uncertainty of how I was going to play was just fucking with me. Like, every day, like, watching games, like, could I pull up on a break like that? Like, can I still – get to the rim and jump off my right leg like that. Like, 
and I just wanted to try it out. So when like you can't try it, like I couldn't even run, you know. So I was still doing calf raises, but in my mind, I wanted to see if I could fucking dunk or shoot a fadeaway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so <laughs> knowing that I couldn't even get in the gym for four months, that was just driving me crazy. So, but once I actually got a chance to like test it out, then that's when it went just downhill. Everything was better, but. But until you could test it, and that really, anxiety was just oh there all God. the time. But then, Can I do it? And Can I, I do it? that would yeah. stop. Once I started getting into the gym, working out individually, and then playing pickup. But once it's like, all right, I need to see what it's like in a real NBA game. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. And then once I did that in preseason, I'm like, all right, I need to see what playoff. T- like, it was just so much going on. I just wanted to get back to a point. So that's why I said in that Milwaukee series, it's like, all right, that was the final. Yeah. That was just the last stage of me, you know, getting over that. that mental. I met him as he's recovering, um, and that's when we kind of got tight. And I remember going over there, and it was the first day you could jump and run. Yeah, it was an exciting day. And he was like like a kid in the music club. He was just excited that he got to play basketball again. Nice. And so it was – I was like, oh, this shit is real. And then just slowly, gradually getting there. And then, Did you ever – that season in the bubble, you never considered – playing it honestly because I didn't feel right I didn't feel like I can do certain things like I can be a decoy out there I felt like I can maybe make be a you, few though. shots but I wasn't like commanding the game like I can now you know so I wasn't going to do it regardless do we want to talk Mars Madness for rap at all or you want to just go I got UNC North Carolina got you that's cool <laughs> we're talking about it. Hey, y'all. No, I'm playing. We got, I'm playing. We got receipts. We got receipts I'm on playing. this. I'm an honorary no, Duke player. I played for Coach K longer than he has, actually. Eight That's years, 12, uh, Team yeah. USA. I'm counting Wow. That. I don't know about. Over well, your four years at Duke. Over duration of time. I don't think. I mean, I think I played uh, 123 I'm games for him, including X. 133 games. Practices. I'm counting all of that. Okay. Eight years. We're going to actually add these up. I'm honorary blue. We should figure out. Honorary blue up. devil. We'll have somebody do it on today. social. <laughs> like figure it out. Do you do you find yourself rooting for Duke a little bit though? I, Just uh, yes. I Nolan's on the staff, this. which is I grew up with him. That's right. That's right. John, I played in high school with him, and tight with him. Played for Coach K. Yeah. Do you have any coach stories that that really stand out? No, I don't actually. He was just he knew what he was. He roll the balls out. Hey, he motivated us though. Like he was one of those guys that like. And still, bring your egos. I don't bring who the best uh, who you are, and we'll figure out the rest. That's probably the best thing I tell people about Coach K. He empowered all of us. That is not how he empowered nineteen year old JJ Reddit. I'd imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, JJ was in the, he had to pull him out the the frat house <laughs> to come and Literally. fucking shoot around. Literally, well, fellas, this has been awesome. It's nah, been great. This, this has been awesome, man. Thanks. Yeah. Been a fan of the show forever, guys. This is the first. Of, we'll do this yeah. Again. yeah, we got, we got to. to. This is. This is the OG crossover. There it is. So.